what is the criteria for implantation there is one simple rule for criteria which was followed for over years but now there has been a change in the criteria now depending upon the country where you're doing the implantation the rules are different because the cost of the implant the finances all of them has to be taken part when we talk about implantation it's not just one particular area of medical implantation criteria but there are various other criteria that need to be filled fulfilled and hence today we have got not just one criteria multiple criteria but before we go into implantation criteria in detail one thing that you should know for sure is every patient who has a bilateral severe to profound sensory neural hearing loss not benefiting from hearing aid ci is your answer so the word that you should remember forever is bilateral and how much should be the hearing loss it must be severe to profound not mild not moderate not just severe it has to be severe to profound sensory neural hearing loss so bilateral severe to profound sensory neural hearing loss is an absolute uh, indication that you must remember for patients who are a candidate for cochlear implant there are other criteria also but children with bilateral profound sensory neural hearing loss they are good candidates for surgery and it is better if you implant before the age of 18 months for best possible outcomes and some centers also do implant at 9 to 10 months of age in fact people doing implants at 6 months of age is also there but ideally would be before 18 months of age or as early as possible because usually by the time the child has presented to you the child would be 3 4 months or 6 months or older it is very hard to recognize a child born deaf it is only after 6 months about a year that the parents really understand that the child is not responding to some form of auditory stimulus so earlier presentation at birth is usually difficult unless there is a screening oa done so screening oa has to be done on every child who is born at birth but unfortunately doesn't happen always so on screening oa if they have found out that there is a child who is congenitally deaf then you will find them at birth but uh, if the child has not undergone a screening or to acoustic emission test then it is quite possible that the child may be ignored for up to 6 months or 1 year of age or even beyond and then they would present to you somewhere in the first second year of life so less than 18 months is a good idea 9 10 months 6 months is also a possibility of doing a cochlear implant surgery now children who are deafened by meningitis now how does meningitis cause deafness So what happens is post meningitis there is a condition that happens which is called as labyrinthitis ossificans. So what is labyrinthitis ossificans? It is a condition where there is ossification of the labyrinth as the name suggests there is ossification of the labyrinth. what will happen here is post meningitis there is a high risk that there is cochlea that is obliterated by a new bone formation and this can happen as early as less than 1 month following meningitis in sometimes it can even happen even more rapidly so what if there is labyrinthitis ossificans then you must ask me a question why does it affect the implant surgery yes it affects the implant surgery because if there is a hard bony cochlea it will cause difficulty for me to insert the electrode into the cochlea so what would happen insertion of electrode into the scala tympani becomes difficult and certain times impossible so before the ossificans happens before the labyrinth undergoes ossification it is better to do a cochlear implant surgery in these children and hence again earlier you do within one month of developing meningitis if you do a surgery then also it is going to benefit the child so who are deafened by meningitis is your second indication so first is congenitally deaf second one is those who have meningitis and following meningitis there is a possibility of labyrinthitis ossificans then also you have to do within one month of men development of meningitis also when we are doing a cochlear implant we give pneumococcal and meningococcal vaccines so that there is by chance when we are doing an implant surgery we do not want the child to have later meningitis or later ossificans happening and hence pre operative 
meningococcal and pneumococcal vaccination are given.